I have the honor of introducing a good friend of ours, a champion for uh, environmental sustainability and economic uh, prosperity across our region. Please welcome to the stage former California Secretary for Natural Resources under Governor Jerry Brown, and now representing the Senate District 17, our very own Senator John Laird. <clears throat> Thank you very much. It is so great to be in person after uh, Zooming away. And uh, I'm so happy that after nine weeks, President Quinones knows that we have seasons in California. That, that is really good news. And, and I also, I've been crisscrossing the district. I was in San Luis Obispo the last two days. Uh, but I salute at home for four days a year for open studios. We're doing it this weekend in case you want to come by on the west side of Santa Cruz. And now I can explain why I was gone for half of setup day uh, uh, today. I want to, as quickly as possible, give you a good update about what just happened in what I think was one of the more productive legislative sessions we've had in recent years. In part, it was because we had a massive surplus, but that presented challenges because we really had to put most of it in one-time money because we're already seeing that next year's budget is not meeting projections. But we set aside a record reserve to be ready uh, to deal with that. And then this year, we tried to address long-standing unmet needs with what that one-time money was. Uh, I chair the Education Budget Subcommittee, and this year the K through 14 year over year amount is up 13%. We're no longer in the bottom five in California and moving way up. <clears throat> I wish we had done more, at least at the legislative side, we were advocating for more for UCCSU. Still, there, there is a 5% increase, but one of the key things for this group and its priorities is that uh, housing is such a problem for students these days, but it is also a problem for the surrounding communities because if the housing needs aren't being met on campus, it really affects the housing market in surrounding communities. So last year, we put $1.5 billion for higher education housing, and it was supposed to be uh, uh, over three years. Well, it was oversubscribed in the first year. So we did another $2 billion this year, so it's $3.5 billion for higher education housing, and I hope in Marina and Seaside and Santa Cruz and other places, the assistance with the housing on the university campuses uh, uh, will deal with uh, uh, the housing market in the surrounding communities. Also, last year, uh, I was instrumental in restoring UC Cooperative Ag Extension to where it was 20 years ago. We did a 55% increase, which really helps farmers that don't have their own scientists or don't have their ability to do things. This year, <clears throat> we did 75 million to the CSUs for the four campuses that really focus on agriculture. Uh, uh, one of the premier ones is Cal Poly and San Luis Obispo, so that we can use that one-time money to try to jumpstart uh, the support for agriculture across the region. Uh, in the budget also, locally, uh, had money for the surf transportation uh, project for the um, homeless shelter to be built in Monterey, uh, got special uh, um, money for an additional well at to Pure Water and for uh, valves to access the dead pools at Nascimento and San Antonio. But I think more importantly, we have over $10 billion of one-time money for water, so people in this region can apply for um, assistance in the groundwater management, assistance in water recycling, assistance in dam safety, many things that really matter so that there is that investment over and above what the specific uh, uh, things were uh, there. Uh, additionally, if you look at, at the legislative package, um, I did a bill that flew under the radar because uh, any mobile home or space built since 1992 is exempt from mobile home rent control. It was designed to spur development and recover costs for the owners, 
but it's now been a 32-year holiday for people in mobile homes that are hostages. They can't move their mobile homes, and they are really subject to the rents. And so I negotiated with the industry, and the governor signed a bill that says uh, every owner will have 15 years to recover costs, and then if there's a local rent control ordinance, it will kick in. So we are restoring rent control to hundreds of thousands of Californians that didn't have it and will help them uh, uh, in housing. And then locally, there was a bill on the Veterans Cemetery here to, to help with that. There was a bill on school board elections. The Mountain School District was prepared to spend one per to 4% of its total general fund on a special election, and we did a bill to deal with that to allow the Gray Bears to, um, to accept recycling, to allow the Pajaro levies to get an advance on the funding that we have done at the, the state and federal level that fully funds that project. But I, uh, I think there were two really important ones, and one is uh, Sergeant Damon Gutzweiler was killed in the line of duty in Santa Cruz two years ago, <clears throat> and he didn't happen to be married to his spouse. They had a, a young child and a child that was born days after he was killed. And those kids didn't get the benefits that other kids that are uh, children of fallen officers. So I did a bill to redefine the definition of family. And now Sergeant Gutzweiler's kids, uh, Detective Butler's kids, a firefighter from Porterville killed in the line of duty, will all get the full benefits that kids should get um, from fallen officers. <clears throat> but I think uh, uh, one of the biggest ones was the work with Robert Rivas at my side on Watsonville Hospital. Uh, uh, <clears throat> just last December, the hedge fund that owned it was going to close the hospital and lay off the over 600 workers and end primary health care coverage for the disadvantaged communities in the Pajaro Valley. And so uh, I did a bill in 19 days, which, if you know Sacramento, is a land speed record, uh, to set up a hospital district and the district was days old when the bankruptcy court accepted its bid to buy it. We put in 25 million from the state and many people in this room were instrumental in the other 40 million. And on August 31st, that hospital transferred to the public dist district is open. And while we still have to work to upright it, uh, we will have a hospital for that community going forward. And that was a big victory for this year. <clears throat> And I think the issue that dominated the legislature this year was our response to climate change. Uh, we did not have a good year a year ago. So the Senate president appointed a 12 Senate working group, named me the chair, and it cut across ethnic divides, political divides, geographic divides, and with equity at the center, we developed an 11 bill package that the governor signed in its entirety. And while I had the biggest bill to kickstart our goals and energy toward carbon neutrality, we were trying to bring electric vehicles to disadvantaged communities, have a high road labor agreement, try to lower utility rates, and so much is put on that in the climate uh, program, and really sort of move California back to the forefront of leadership and we're still not doing enough. And I'm going to Egypt the day after the election to be able to make sure that, uh, that California is represented on the world stage on what we're doing. But I think two last things. One that really dominated the news was the extension of Diablo Canyon. And I could talk for ages about that because uh, uh, it is in my district. And I ended up laying out for the governor 10 things that had to be done for there to be a deal, and he met all 10. That deal was totally shaped, but the key thing is, is there's $1.1 billion to kickstart renewable energy in California because we need it whether Diablo Canyon is extended or we need it whether it's not, and that is a big victory out of that. And then lastly, uh, we had an incident here with battery storage in Moss Landing. I know I was on the edge of being late to the Monterey Board of Supervisors that morning with Highway 1 closed. But I think the little known thing is when we had those hot 10 days in September, 
Battery storage now in California in that fixed period of time generates two and a half times the energy as Diablo Canyon. If we did not have battery storage in those 10 days, our grid would have gone down. So the challenge that I'm going to try to face and I'm vetting into the next session is how we require fire and safety plans for battery storage so that we do both things. We meet the need for the grid, but we make sure that people around those facilities can have some comfort that there are plans or actions that make them safe. And going next year, we really have energy. We're going to have to do a challenging budget. But I just look forward to continuing to work with all of you to, to meet the needs of the Central Coast, because uh, uh, hopefully we'll have as a good year next year as we did this year. Thanks for letting me uh, update you.